Our reading this morning is a well-known reading, the Psalm of David, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. This is one of the most recognized passages in the Bible. And to my surprise, one of the things I discovered uh, when I was beginning to put this message together the last few weeks is I have never preached on this passage in 20 years as a priest, even longer as a youth minister, which surprised me. What was even more surprising was when I went on to find out who other people had preached this, I found very, very few pastors that I know of have spoken on this passage, which really surprised me, which may, leads me to believe I think I may end up doing a series on this sometime in the, in the new year because it's such an incredible passage. But there were some things that were show, shown that at least showed me in this passage that I hope that I can communicate to you this morning because I found it very, very therapeutic for me where I am in life. Uh, that many things I was not aware of. And the reason why I think mo mo most of us kind of skip over this passage, it's very poetic, it's very, very beautiful, um, is that we've heard it spoken so many times at funerals. In fact, if you've, I don't think I've ever not heard it read at a funeral, unless it was a secular funeral. And even people who don't even believe like this psalm. So my hope is this morning is to go through and just uncover some major themes on this passage. I can't go through all the scriptures, but enough to give us an idea of what was being communicated by David here. Uh, and let me just put, put this first part up here, which says, if I can advance it there, the Lord is my shepherd. Notice that here it doesn't say the Lord is a shepherd. It says the Lord is my shepherd. And you've heard it said before. I say it again, that Christianity is not a religion, it is a relationship. It's a bond and a covenant we form with God that God forms with us. In other words, Christianity is about personal pronouns. My Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Shepherd. And of course, this makes sense because, I mean, Jesus said... Uh, here we go. I'm getting it here. Okay. My sheep know my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. In other words, there is a relationship there between the shepherd and the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. Secondly, right here, and I found this amazing, is the second passage here, which says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Now, this is something I confess that I missed this for a long, long, long time. Because when we think of green pastures, we think of, we think of this, okay? Uh, most of us have the idea of the Scottish Highlands, okay? Luscious, green, leafy, just scenic views. We just lay down and just lay it in the cotton, okay? Lay in the clouds, lay in this fluffy green grass, that's not what David's communicating here, okay? Because the, what David had in mind is, is this right here, this picture. And the reason why that is because 70% of Palestine is desert. It's an arid land. And what's being communicated here is David was looking out of this at a land that seems to lack everything. I mean, do you see any green pastors there <laughs> I mean it doesn't seem to be anything there and here's what is so interesting about here 
uh, and I did a lot of looking into this. It's interesting if you go to Israel or that part of the world to Judea, and I've been told by people that there are shepherds there that you will actually meet that go back hundreds and hundreds of years from in their family lineage. In other words, their fathers and their grandfathers and their great grandfathers and their great great grandfathers were all shepherds passed down through the centuries in the family. And what we know is, is that we know that shepherds would know that the landscape of Judea and the mountainsides, the hillsides, the face, the Mediterranean, we know that often the mist that blows off the Mediterranean, just enough moisture will blow on the hillside to just put a, a mist over the rocks and into the crevices to help it grow just a little bit of grass that you can barely even see there. And of course, what happens is, this happens enough, is that these little green shoots will kind of will shoot up here and there. And what happens is the shepherd will lead the, the sheep along these paths, and he'll lead them to one little patch of grass, and they'll eat. And then he'll move to another little part, and they'll follow the shepherd, and they'll eat. In other words, what's being communicated here, this is not a place where you get fat and happy. The shepherd will give you just enough to eat to get through that day. Not to stuff yourself to last for a week here. Just enough to get them through that day. Unless we forget... Okay, Jesus taught us in, this in the Lord's Prayer. You remember? We pray for our monthly bread. Weekly bread? No, what is it? Our daily bread. Very good class, you passed, okay? We pray for our daily bread. In other words, what he's saying, here's the point, okay? When you and I in the wilderness, when we find ourselves in the wilderness, when we find ourselves walking through this valley, Okay, we've got to follow the shepherd to lead us to places to get something to eat. And I tell you, I got to tell you here, I changed my thinking on this. And uh, it's only recently I began to realize this. Here's how I've changed my thinking on this. For years, if you told me, uh, and I would certainly have said this, that I would have thought the wilderness would be the last place I would ever want to be ever. If you told me I would want to be in places like this, okay, places where it looks beautiful and it's luscious and it's green and places where you want to lie down, okay, not, not this, not an arid gr ground. And here's what I've kind of, here's what I know now. The places where God seems to talk to people the greatest the, in the Old Testament, is full of this, is not on the mountaintops. It's not in places where it's green. The places where God seems to speak the loudest to God's people is out in the desert, is out in the wilderness. Again, I could do a series on this because think about this. The places where when we're out in the wilderness, there is nothing else distracting us, is it? There's nothing, and now that you are relying completely on the shepherd to get you through that day, and there are times, many of you know in this here, there have been seasons in our lives where we hope this would be like this all the time, but it's not, where we are relying completely on God all the time because we have nowhere else, nowhere else to go. It's just him. And I'm learning now that some of the greatest places to be in the wilderness. In fact, let me just bring up a passage here out of Deuteronomy. Remember how the Lord, it says, led you on this long journey through the wilderness, allowing you these hardships to test you. Look at this, what he says here. So you might know, and he might know your character and whether you would depend on him. When you're out in the wilderness, you discover what you believe. And let me tell you why this is important to remember this. There are people here this morning 
I know this. I, can, I look out here. I know some of your stories. Those of you who are watching online, there are people here right now that you have felt recently that God is not near. God is distant. You may even, even felt that your friends and your family that you need in the, at your hour of greatest need have abandoned you. You may even felt like the church has, has abandoned you. I've let you down. And by the way, if I haven't, I will. If you feel like that, then Psalm 23 is for you. Because here's what I know. <laughs> okay, what this is communicating here is that God in the wilderness, in the valley, God sits with us. God waits with us. God walks with us in that place. So what I'm saying to you is the wilderness is okay because you find God there. And he walks with us. And let, let me tell you what else it says here, okay? He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Now, here's what it's interesting about this. If, if you were to translate this woodenly, I, I think a better translation is this right here. He leads me along the right path. In other words, in other words there, is a, there is a right path and there are wrong paths. And let me tell you something. It is easy to walk down the wrong path if you're not careful. It's saying here that the shepherds and the shepherd will lead you down just the right path. And I have been told before, I have never been to the Holy Land. But I remember I heard this before that uh, someone who's been there was flying over Judea. And he noticed on the hillside, he said, if you notice these hillsides, there's all these kind of crisscrossing paths that kind of go all, all over the place into other into forgotten places. And he said, there, uh, he, said he was told that there, those are paths worn by either animals or people walking on them, or even weather that creates those gullies, those pathways. And what we know is that if the shepherd is not watching the sheep and one of the sheep wander, wanders off, it's very, very easy then for them to wander down one of these paths onto a dead end. And I mean literally a dead end. That's where the name comes from. In fact, I've also been told that some of these paths, you can actually look down the bottom of a ravine where some of these sheep and goats have gone. And you can see down the bottom of the ring hundreds of skeletons and carcasses of sheep that have fallen off these cliffs because they've gone down a wrong path. And it, 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 it's in such an incredible image here, okay? Because the image that's being given here is the shepherd will lead you down just the right path. And you have to follow him. Because, okay, look how stark the terrain is here. This is anything but user-friendly. It's dangerous. And the shepherd will lead us down just the right path. Because the whole picture here that I think is extraordinary, if you fast forward thinking about who the great shepherd is, Jesus Christ, who says, okay, I am the good shepherd. I will lay down my life for the sheep. In other words, what Jesus is saying is, I'm never going to have you walk through a path that I haven't already walked through myself. He knows where he's going. Now, that's a fact. That is just a fact. But let me also tell you what's a fact. And that is there are times where you and I have been on this terrain and we are walking down a path and we think and say, where is this going? Where are you leading this, Lord? Have you thought that? Okay, don't let me hang it up here. Okay, I, I, I know you've thought this. Where are we going? And we, you begin to think, maybe I've taken a wrong road, a wrong path here. And where is God leading? And the reason why, I, th I think this is primarily American problem, honestly. I have a lot of friends who are Africans 
had a, a, an, a, an Asian in my church plant who was in China for many years. It's very different how they look at Christianity how, versus we look at Christianity. And that is that I think this is a primary American thing that we believe, and we've been trained, and I've certainly had to change my thinking on this, that God's goodness will always translate to earthly goodness. In other, honestly, some of the most popular preachers in America teach this right now. And that is, is if I read my Bible, if I show up to church, if I throw money in the collection plate, you know, if I do what I'm told, then God owes me. He owes me goodness. And therefore, the belief is, is that God will always heal, he'll always deliver, he'll always exempt us from diseases, there'll be plenty of money in the bank account, our kids will always turn out great. <laughs> no failure in business, no divorce, no problem marriages, nobody experiences hardships. And that just ain't true. It's we, that we don't experience hardships. Because it's not only true because our own experience has said this, but the great shepherd, the lamb that was led to the slaughter, could we not say he experienced hardships? And if no servant is greater than his master and he is our master, it stands to reason that we are going to have hardships. In fact, Paul says this, okay, we will go through many, many hardships, many hardships before we enter the kingdom of God. There are books that can be written in here of our lives of people who know exactly what I'm talking about. This, this whole idea of what Paul is saying here. And I got to tell you, early in my faith journey, 31 years ago when a professor on campus led me to Christ, if I had read through Psalm 23, how I would have understood it then versus how I understood it now could not be more different. I would have said 30 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago, that life is mostly filled with green pastures. And occasionally, we and I will walk through a dark valley. Now that I've gotten older, I think it's the opposite. And that is, while there are seasons where it, there is luscious green paths and everything seems to be clicking, everything seems to be great, my experience has been most of life many times is filled with a veil full of tears. Which brings me to this passage right here, okay? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Here's what is hilarious, okay? I typed in this on, my, on a search engine a couple weeks ago. And occasionally I will type in a passage and I'll put up images. Do you know what image came up? This is funny. Let me put this picture up here, okay? A, a goat walking through a path full of alligators. Does that not feel like how life is sometimes, right? So what is, what is David saying here? Inspired by God to write this. Though I walk through a valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We know this from experience. Everybody here, I don't think there's a person here that doesn't know this, but we know that death is always around us. The shadow of death is always there. It never leaves us. It is always right there. It reminds me of uh, that famous line Alexander Hamilton wrote to his wife in a letter. I've thought about and imagined death so much it feels more like a memory. It's just always there. And I want you to imagine the sheep that get lost from the shepherd are walking through this valley of the shadow of death. And when you're walking through something and there's a darkness there, you don't feel like you can see anything. Okay, but here's what is so interesting about this. Shadows, and I never saw this before. I had never saw this until about two weeks ago. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of ink spilled in this verse here. But here's what I, I, I saw, okay? The idea of it being complete darkness. You cannot see shadows in complete darkness. In other words, there is light coming from somewhere. And there's something between us and the light that's blocking us from seeing it. That's why we're seeing the shadows. 
It's blocking the light. And the other thing is shadows cannot hurt you. Shadows cannot touch you. They may scare us. They may terrify us, but it cannot touch us. And I saw this, I came across this wonderful picture here that's communicating. You may not even be able to see this online or watching. That little dot down there is a shepherd in a dark valley calling out to the sheep. And there's this wonderful light behind him that's shining. Where there are shadows means there's always light. You follow the light. And of course, Jesus himself says this, okay? I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Whoever follows me, you will never be in darkness. And that is an encouraging thought. And notice also, okay, when we're walking through this valley, this shadow of death, okay, notice it says here, we walk through it. That is a huge word there. We walk through it. In other words, we don't reside in it. You don't set up camp there. You don't live there. And if you are walking through it, it means you are walking to something. If the shepherd's leading us through it, he's, he's taking us to something. And where is he taking us? He's taking us to higher ground, safer ground, places where we can eat, places where we can rest. To, so we know this. You cannot get to higher places unless you first walk through the valley to get there. We walk through the valley to get to higher ground. And this is why we don't fear, because we know we're headed somewhere. And why should we not fear? Simply put, okay, the shepherd, okay, the great shepherd does not stand up on the ridge shouting down to us down below, hey, here's how you get your way back up here. No, we know the shepherd comes and gets down in the valley and leads us out. He leads us out. Okay, and why? For you are with me. He's always with us. Your rod and your staff, they've come to something that I will cling on to. Because I know you'll lead me out. One of the reasons why the 12 steps have been so instrumental in my life and millions of other people is because you meet people hmm, you meet people who've been in the valley and they have walked they have gotten to the other side they've gotten out of it and I can tell you this I may not know much but I know this I, you, the greatest people you ever meet are people who will come and walk alongside you in the valley and they will tell you in so many words, I'm with you. And I know the way out. And I'll take you there. That is exactly how it is with God. Many of you know this. Outwardly what it's like to walk in darkness and yet inwardly to know there's a presence of God right there with you. Because when you know that God is with you, you can face anything. That's why we don't fear. David went into the valley of the shadow of death. And here's the thing. This is a foreshadow, obviously, of God's grace. David walked through the valley of the shadow of death, okay? But Jesus Christ went right into death. He didn't catch a shadow. He, got, he caught death itself. And now that... He stared down the greatest enemy in the history of the world, of mankind, death, and he came out the other side of it. That's why he said, it's in many ways, Jesus is saying, if you're walk, when you walk through that valley, I'll be with you, and I'll lead you out of it. I'll take you to higher ground. He will never leave us alone. I want to close with this thought. Last, I'm, I'm close 
very close with three pastors in our community, three different churches, a Methodist church, a Live Oak right over here, and another church, a church plant out in Hardyville. And I was talking to one of our, my, one of my friends, maybe a year ago, we were eating breakfast. And we, he was talking about a young woman in his ch- church, one of his parishioners. I think she was in her late 30s, early 40s. She was dying of breast cancer, young mother. And she loved the Lord. She, you know, was very committed to Christ. And yet she told him, maybe a week before she died, she said, she said to him, I'm scared. I know where I'm going, but, you know, when I walk through that valley of the shadow of death, Everybody can talk about a big game, but when you're actually walking through it, you feel like you're alone. And what he told her, and he shared with me, he said, you know, I told her, that's not true. The shepherd is with you. He's always been with you. But even greater than that, the angels are with you. And he pointed out to me an obscure scripture that I never saw before. Amazing. I could read the scriptures for 20-something years. I never saw this, okay? This passage right here. He, God, will send his angels and gather his elect, that is God's people, from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. In other words, there is no place that we can go or we will be that God will not find us. And God is not there with us. And my friend said that he went to pray over her as she was really close to death. And of course, you know, you've been around people who've died, those you care about. Usually people that are dying of cancer sleep their last few days away. She hadn't moved or spoken in two days. And he's praying over her on the foot of the bed. And suddenly her eyes opened She sat up in bed, and he said, she was looking right through me to something behind me. And she immediately put out her arms like this, like she's reaching out to something. And she said to me and anybody else in the room, look, look, they're here. And then she died. As my friend said, what a way to go. What a way to go. Jesus says the angels will come and take us into the presence of the Lord. The word says the Lord will walk with us in the shadows. Okay, in other words, we won't stay in that place. We don't reside there. This is why David said, okay, surely your goodness and surely your mercy I know now will walk with me and be with me all the days of my life. And then, and then, okay, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Therefore, we don't need to be afraid. He is with us till the end. Let's pray. Our Father, you are our present. You are our future. Our life is in your hands, as it's always been. And no matter how dark the valley, we know, Lord, that we are never alone. Because the cross, you just didn't overcome a shadow. You you overcame death itself. And so because of that, Lord, we give thanks to you this day. And because we know that you walked through that valley, we know that you are the one that will lead us out of it. And so because of that, we know that your goodness and your mercy shall continue to follow us all the days of our lives. As you look forward to that day, we dwell with you and the angels and the archangels and all the company of heaven forever. It's in that name we ask and pray these things. Amen.